two timelines, one impossible mystery. Life is Strange Double Exposure follows Max Caulfield as she shifts between two timelines to solve a supernatural murder mystery after finding her friend Safi dead in the snow. In this parallel timeline, Safi is still alive and still in danger. With her new power, can Max solve and prevent the same murder? Buy Life is Strange Double Exposure, available now on Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and PC. Rated M for Mature. It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. The following episode of Technical Difficulties could be the most important one you ever hear. After years of painstaking research, I have found the thread. I have found the irrefutable evidence that links every major event in human history together in one seamless whole. The Knights Templar, World War I, the Roswell Conspiracy, and the assassination of JFK, and the true masterminds behind 9-11. After this podcast, you will know the truth, and at last, you will know the identity of the true masters of the world. Ten years in the making, this podcast will blow the lid off of everything. I, Kai and Chris Conroy, am both honored and humbled to bring you the episode of the ages, this... Testing, 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 testing. Hey, Bronson, is this thing working yet or what? Uh, yeah, we got it. Oh, sweet! Okay, hey, everybody, this is Jerome and Bronson over there on the controls. Hey, guys. Cool, huh? So, anyway, we've been petitioning the boss man here to let us do an episode of all our own of Tech Def, you know, and he wasn't too receptive to the idea, so we decided to hijack the feed this week. I don't think he was doing anything important anyway. So, we're going to do a show uh, all about video games, which is our favorite subject, right? Yeah, I'm totally excited. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. So, anyway, welcome to our inaugural episode of a very special Tech Diff. This is Level Grind. Uh, maybe we should explain that term. I'll let him look it up. It's more educational that way. Oh, all right. Uh, dude. What? Music? Yeah, I like music. Theme music. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Here we go. Seriously, dude, we gotta get this thing ironed out. Sorry, man, I'm just not used to the control thing yet. I never had to do Come this on, before. Come on, it's a big thing. We gotta get this going. Okay, well, this is Jerome, and this is the pilot episode of Level Grind, a comedy series about video games and video game culture uh, within technical difficulties. And uh, we'll see how this goes, okay? I got, haven't got much to say beyond that. Uh, catch you later. Tuesday nights at 8, it's the hilarious new sitcom, Halo. Join the comedy as that unlikely duo, the Master Chief and the Arbiter, share an apartment. Hey, Slimy. What do you want, Demon? What happened to all the rent money we put aside? Do not waste my time with words of heresy, Demon. If you have come to challenge me or kill me, then do so. You bought beer with it again, didn't you? And I noticed you didn't have any objection to drinking most of it, Spartan. Oh, the landlord is gonna kill us. And just wait until their wacky, swinging neighbor Larry shows up. Spartan. What? I'm busy. Our wacky, swinging neighbor Larry has showed up and he's brought three stewardesses with him. And? They are all infected with the parasite. <laughs> Terrific. Well, there goes the security deposit. I had a hot day tonight and everything. Reclaimer, I have detected an outbreak of the flood inside the apartment. You have 30 seconds to evacuate before I destroy the entire city. <sighs> Again. Again. That's Halo, the series, Tuesday nights at 8. Hey there, Timmy. What you doing? Hey, Jerome. Check it out. I'm playing Eye of Judgment for the PlayStation 3. Wow, sounds cool, little guy. Why don't you explain to me how it works? You know damn well how this works, Jerome. You're the one who helped me set it up. Why don't you explain to me how it works for the benefit of the audience who might not know what the frig we're talking about? That's going to cost you extra. Hey, I didn't have to buy you those expansion packs, you know. <sighs> all right, all right. <clears throat> so, Timmy, how does it work? Well, the game uses the PlayStation Eye camera, which comes bundled with it, and it also uses these cards. Okay. Then when you hold the cards underneath the camera like this, uh-huh. see, a monster appears floating on the card on your TV screen because the camera reads the information on the card. Wow. Then you can make them fight each other on the included play mat with an online opponent. It's like playing Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh! for real. Wow, what a sweet use of technology. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So the game comes with the cards, I presume? Well, it comes with a starter deck, and then if you want more monsters, you have to go out and buy booster packs individually. Wow, so it exploits gamers like heroin addicts is what you're saying. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. I've been sneaking around town for the last three weeks giving blood just so I can afford as many cards as possible. Oh, that's why you're so pale. I thought it was just a gamer's tan. Nah, it's an 
academia. Well, it sounds pretty good, Timmy, but why don't you give us a practical application by giving us a demonstration of the gameplay? Okay, well, I've set up a game online with this guy, see? Okay. And then I pointed the camera right down mm-hmm. here at the mat. It's mm-hmm. the play mat that comes included with the game. Mm-hmm. And this is where I put my cards down to play. All right. Now I'm going to start by placing my first card down here in the play mat, see? Okay. okay. It's a triceptor behemoth. All right. I put that's it down, it. and there it appears on the screen. Oh. Okay, so that's my turn. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, okay, now, now on his turn... Yeah. He's going to point the camera right at his penis. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing how callous the internet can make your soul by the time you're 12. Yeah, well, welcome to the real world, little bro. (laughs) I bleach. Guarantee you they don't make it strong enough. They never do. And now here's a joke about Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, the original Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, Yeah, I know I'm a few years behind in this, all right? Cut me some slack. Come on in, doors open. Ah, Doctor, good to see you. Ah, hello, Liquid Snake. Uh, Mr. Liquid Snake, Commander Liquid Snake. What the heck do I call you, anyway? Oh, just call me Sir for now. We'll work out the details to that later. Doctor. Yes, sir. I've informed the United States that I'm blackmailing them. I'm going to blow them up with nuclear weapons if they don't give us the remains of Big Boss and oodles of cash. Ah, it's very proactive of you. Thank you. Now, tell me, how are the genome soldiers we need to guard the Shadow Moses base coming along? Oh, swimmingly. I've got them set up so they're faster and stronger Mm -hmm. than the average soldier. They Mm. can survive incredibly hostile environments. Good, good. I've got them set them up with a GPS tracking device via satellite, so that way, in case of an emergency situation, you'll know exactly where all your men are at all times. Ah, excellent, Doc. Uh, thank right. you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What, what, what? What if the enemy gets hold of this technology? Won't that mean that they'll know where all our men are at all times? Not to worry, I thought of that too. If the men are surprised or go on high alert status, then their biofeedback automatically overrides the tracking device and jams the radar. Ah, very clever, Doc. Wait, wait. If it's an emergency situation, like you said before, doesn't that mean we won't know where any of our men are as soon as they go on high alert? Exactly, and neither will the enemy. Well, it's completely pointless then, isn't it? And speaking of high alert, check out this cool feature, okay? If one of our guys spots an enemy, a big loud noise happens and an exclamation point appears over their head. Uh, What? See, that way you know they've spotted something. And then the noise will actually alert all the soldiers in the vicinity that one of them has spotted something and they'll all go on high alert. Thus, presumably jamming the GPS system. Ah, there you see, now you're catching on. You're insane. one last last feature that's really cool, if you bop them on the head and knock them out and pull their mask off really quick and look at their face, they've got little swirly eyes like a cartoon character. That was just something I threw in to amuse myself. Uh, how much extra did all these features of yours cost? Mm, I don't know. Million here, million there. I mean, who knows? <laughs> Come on, Mark. I'm trying to perfect the ultimate soldier here. So does any of this affect the performance? Oh, no, 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 no. They're the perfect fighting force. All right, it does affect their short-term memory. <sighs> How? Meanwhile, at that very moment in another part of the installation. Hey, soldier. What? Did a guy just run by here? Who are you? What? What? I, um, I'm gonna go back on patrol. Okay. Hey, whose footprints are these? Um, they're mine. Who are you? What? What? Uh, um, um, I'm gonna go back on patrol. Yeah, me too. Nice to meet you. Hey, who are you? What? Snake, this is Octagon. Listen, I've been watching these genome soldiers for a while. I don't think you'll have any trouble getting past them. They're really stupid. Snake? Are you alright? What are you doing? (coughs) I wasn't trying to swallow a pack of cigarettes, if that's what you're asking. Huh? And there you have it, folks. My Metal Gear Solid joke. (laughs) And it only took me nine years to get to that one. Look, they can't all be current, okay? This has been brought to you by Final Fantasy Inns. A full night's sleep in ten seconds or all your gill back. Okay, so here's the part of the show where we get to review some games. Because after all, what video game show wouldn't be complete without some sort of review thing? Exactly. And this week we're going to review a whole bunch of games for the Nintendo Wii because, well, we have one. And it's more than we can say for most of the people out there, I'm sure. <laughs> As you may have known if you tried to buy it this holiday season, or last holiday season for that matter. Yeah, and we'll be reviewing other games in the future, probably for the Xbox 360 and the PS2. Yeah, but not the PS3 because uh, we don't own one. Yeah, and probably won't anytime soon. Yeah, sorry, Sony. Call us when Final Fantasy 13 comes out. Yeah, now the first game we're going to review here is Link's Crossbow Training with the Wii Zapper. The first thing I'm going to take exception to here is the title, Link's Crossbow Training. That implies that he is training with a crossbow for a greater purpose. But he's not. He's just sort of shooting things with a crossbow. It's just a bunch of games where you shoot stuff with a crossbow. Yeah, there's no story, nothing. He's just got a crossbow and he's shooting stuff. It's kind of more like Link's Crossbow Challenge, which would have been a much more appropriate title. However, I digress. Yeah, it comes bundled with the Wii Zapper, which is a pretty cool piece of equipment. Yeah, it's sweet. It's like really good heavy-duty plastic and it feels good in your hand and it really does a good job of hiding the cable from the Wiimote nunchuck arrangement that you have to sort of load into it. So it does 
doesn't introduce any extra battery apparated stuff. The game itself has no story or anything. It's just a bunch of sort of loosely collected mini games set in the Zelda Twilight Princess world. Yeah, the graphics are really, really sweet if you played that game and liked it. I mean, it's really, really pretty, and you get to shoot lots of monsters. Yeah, and you get to shoot the Ordons in the junk. Yeah, the big yellow Rocky guys from the game appear in a whole level, and they're wearing targets right over their tackle, and you have to shoot them, like, right in the junk. Uh, a prospect I found both strangely dismaying and arousing at the same time. I really didn't need to know that about you, Jerome. Well, now you do, and knowing is half the battle. So anyway, the Wii Zapper and uh, yeah. Lynx crossbow training mm-hmm. game is pretty cool. It's worth the $25 price, and, yeah. and as for the game itself, like I said, pretty simplistic, if pretty, yeah. and uh, I could think of a worse way to kill two hours. And speaking of killing things with a zapper, let's move on to Umbrella Chronicles. That's right, Capcom's latest installment in the Resident Evil game series is a new light gun game. Yeah, it's an on-rail shooter, meaning you don't move your character, it moves by itself, and then you just kind of move your gun back and forth and point at the screen and reload once in a while, and then zombies pop up and you uh, shoot them in the head. And frankly, do you need any more of an excuse to play a game than that? Although it's not all roses. Or blood and skull fragments. Yeah, it says it's Wii Zapper compatible, but frankly, I wouldn't play it that way. Yeah, you gotta use the A button a lot and shake the remote back and forth, and it's a little bit confusing, and it's kind of like not where your hand is if you're using the zapper. And you gotta use a lot of complicated button combinations and shake movements when you're fighting the bosses in this game, which is about as much fun as fighting bosses in any Resident Evil game, uh, which is to say virtually no fun at all. Yes, getting killed by bosses over and over again is a main feature of the Resident Evil games, as anyone who's ever played them can attest to. Yes, it's so much fun to get killed by the bosses over and over again. But you do feel compelled to try and finish it, though, because it tells a really cool story about the rise and fall of the Umbrella Corporation. Which it explains by having light gun levels set in Resident Evil's 0 through 3, and then having a whole new section on the end that's uh, unique to this game. And really hokey voice acting. Well, come on, dude. This is Resident Jill Sandwich Evil, you know. True, true, true. However, this brings up an interesting observation from our point of view about Resident Evil itself. Yeah, Capcom's Resident Evil game series is kind of like the opposite of Mario. Yeah, games like Mario Sunshine and Mario 64, Mario Galaxy have virtually no story at all, but they're so much fun to play that you just want to keep going and going. Yeah, and Resident Evil is virtually no fun to play. I mean, come on, be honest, you know, but the story is so cool, you want to see how it turns out, so yeah, that kind of, yeah, you kind of yeah. put up with the frustration mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, so on the pro side, shooting zombies, uh, really, really great graphics, uh, shooting zombies, uh, blood and guts, shooting zombies, and uh, shooting zombies. Yeah, and lots of cool weapons and a really, really smooth, really excellently implemented pinpoint accurate crosshairs, but don't use the Wii Zapper, it'll make the frustrating boss fights that much worse. What do we got next? The game they said would never happen. Duke Nukem Forever. Dude, let's not get crazy. Didn't I hear something about a release date for that? Uh, you know how they say that the world may end when the Mayan calendar runs out on December 21st, 2012? Uh, yeah. Well, I hear that's Duke Nukem Forever's release date. Oh. Well, anyway, the game we're going to review next for the Wii is Sega's Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Yes, it's set in China in the dark future of 2008 where all the countries in the world will be represented by plumbers and anthropomorphic animals. Although, really, what it is is sort of an Olympic-themed sports game. Not unlike Wii Sports on steroids uh, featuring the mascot cat characters from Nintendo and Sega, respectively. Yeah, with a really high production value, too, and it's lots of fun. Yeah, lots and lots of Olympic-themed sports, pretty much all of them, really, and with a fairly complex control scheme that makes you really, really work for points. Yeah, one way you can tell a Wii game is really successful is the fact that you're enjoying it and want to continue to play it, in spite of the injuries you've given yourself. And Jerome and I both managed to blow out our backs while competing in any of the running games. So, parents, remember, it's a really family-friendly game. You can play with your kids, but keep the ibuprofen handy. The fallout from this game, however, will not be so family-friendly. Yes, we regret to inform you that now that Mario and Sonic technically exist in the same universe thanks to this game, you can look forward to all kinds of Mario and Sonic character crossover perverted fan fiction appearing on the internet. If it hasn't already before this. Which it probably has. Damn you, internet. Damn you to hell. And that about wraps it up for our first review session here on Level Grind. No, dude, we got one more. What? Our last review is for Wii Carnival Games. You're going to review that? That's like three months old. Well, I didn't get my review copy until just now. Yeah, I couldn't help but notice all your review copies. You say Hollywood video yeah, on Dude, them. don't give it away. <sighs> Jeez. Well, we gotta hurry up, too. I have to have these back to the store in an hour. All right, fine, fine, fine. We Carnival Games. That's right. It's a collection of carnival games. Yeah. For, for the, the Wii. Wii, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's yet another collection of mini games for the Wii, except this time it's got things like Dunk Tank and throwing darts at balloons and, you know, like trying to toss rings into a plate. 
or something. Yeah, and all of the games have a super duper simple control scheme, usually involving a time button pressed or a wrist flick. So really young gamers can pick it up and play it, and that's kind of nice. Yeah, and the physics are surprisingly accurate in places. In fact, I would go as far as to say it is the most realistic simulation of a carnival I have ever experienced in my life. Yep. Some of the graphics were hard on the eyes. Mm -hmm. The voices were really annoying. Yep. After half an hour of playing, I was hot, tired, bored, and I wanted to go home. If you just ate a lot of greasy food while you were playing it until you were sick, it'd be just like the real thing. Pretty much. Well, that's it for the reviews. Okay, well, that's it for the pilot episode of Level Grind. I hope you liked it. If you did, stop over at techdiff.com and uh, drop us a line and tell us what you think. And tell the boss guy you liked it, too. Maybe he'll give us another shot at doing it. So are we done here or what? Yeah, that's, that's the end theme music. All right, well, I'm going to switch back over to his feed, then. He's still in the other studio. Oh, is he still doing that conspiracy thing? Oh, jeez. All right, well, see you guys next time. End transmission. That, my friends, is the smoking gun. And you can't deny it any further. Now you know the truth. As I said before, this podcast has been ten years in the making. And a lot of people have put their lives on the line to get me this information. To make sure nothing ever happens to them, I've compiled all my notes into this bucket right here. And I'm going to set it on fire and destroy them forever. Like this. There. All my proof is gone forever. But the information in this podcast stands as a testimony to it. And remember, the truth will set us free. And now that you know it, stand up and fight back. Fight back for a free world. Remember, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. All right, that and these these notes setting my studio on fire. Okay, see you guys next week. All right, shit. Oh, boy. Oh, Sue is going to kill me. Well, I hope that was worth waiting for, you guys. That was that was my gaming show that I kept talking about doing. Uh, level Grind. Unless we can come up with a better title for it. I like Level Grind. Um, and for those of you who don't know what it is, as I mentioned earlier, it's the process in RPGs or in uh, games like World of Warcraft where you fight low-level monsters for a really, really long time so you can get strong enough to take on higher-level monsters. So you level up. It's called Level Grinding. It's... Quite possibly the most tedious part of any of these of these games, as anybody who's ever played them can tell you. Um, that's that's the beginnings of it. I just that was some of the notes I had, and I've got some other ideas for this for gaming. Unless nobody likes it at all, um, I think it's a pretty cool idea. And uh, since I like playing video games, I thought I'd sort of you know plowshare it into some sort of other show. And uh, maybe I don't know. Hey, ideas? Why don't you stop by techdiff.com or? Send me a Gmail at techdiff at gmail.com to see if video gaming is a good or bad idea, if you think the show was any good, or if you think I should change it up or what. I don't know. Mm, just, it's a pilot episode. What can I tell you? Anyway, I have a really important piece of news uh, for you here. God help me what I'm about to do. Uh, as you may have figured out, last week there was no show. Very uh, sorry about that. If you didn't read the blog post at techdiff.com, uh, I just I had a collision of some scheduling conflicts, and my wife Susan was home from work, and um, I just didn't have the time or the energy uh, to do a, f a full show. And uh, plus, you know, it was Thanksgiving here, so I was cooking all day and that kind of thing, and it was coming up on the whole sort of you know weekend to do that. And it just it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. And I thought rather than do another best of show because I had done that the week before, yeah, I done that the week before. I just thought you know I'm not going to put you through that again, so I'll just go ahead and skip the show. And, and normally I like to, as I said, I'd tell you in advance that I'm going to skip the show, so you're not surprised when it happens. Well, I've decided I need to mix things up and change things up because I'm getting uh, maybe I'm getting a little stale. I don't know. Maybe my show is I I don't know why, but even Sue agrees. I should I should try to change things up a bit. So to that end. God help me. God help me for what I'm about to do. What I'm about to announce here, I can't make all the promises in the world that this is going to work. But um, here it is. For the month of December, maybe there are those of you out there who know what an advent calendar is. It's one of those things where you open a door every day starting on December 1st right up until the Christmas day, and there's usually a gift behind it or a little picture or something. That's called an advent calendar. Well, for the month of December, I'm announcing the Tech Diff Advent Calendar. Every day, starting this Saturday on December 1st, there will be something there for you uh, on the feed. I'm going to try and make sure I get it all done. I'm going to try to get ahead of myself. I'm going to try to make sure that this is one of those broken promises that I can't keep. But I am going to try to post new material every day 
for an entire for the entire month of December up till the 25th. And um, I can't promise anything about the quality. And uh, I don't know what exactly it's going to be or how long it is. I don't know. Maybe it'll be a minute. Maybe it'll be four or five minutes of material. All I know is every day there will be something new. And I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to do that in lieu of doing a new show every week or in addition to doing a new show every week. So each Friday show would be a part of the calendar, but it would be a full-length show or maybe a shorter-length show. I don't know for sure. We'll see how this works out. I've never tried anything like this before. But this is your Christmas gift, folks. 25 straight days of Tech Diff. And God help us all. So, anyway, I've been Kai and Chris Conroy, and this has been Technical Difficulties. Oh, I, did I ever even announce the date for this one? Oh, I don't think I did. This has been Technical Difficulties. You have been experiencing Technical Difficulties for uh, November... November 30th, that's what the calendar says. November 30th, 2007. And um, see you Saturday. Oh, Lord, help us all. Uh, and if you wanted to drop me a line, and like I said before, techdiff, T-K-D-I-F-F at gmail.com or over at techdiff.com to leave a message on the boards, uh, boards there uh, for me. And um, also uh, like that. So I'll, I'll try to give, convey any more information because you'll be hearing from me daily for a month. You, both, you people are going to be so sick of me. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'm done. Bye. So, do you have children, or are you just a child at heart? In which case, Saturday Story Circle might be a good place to kickstart your weekend. Because we have the very best of family-friendly audio, which is all rated G for great. Join us on the main Mutual Audio Network feed, or you can find us at the Saturday Story Circle wherever you get your podcasts. The Mutual Audio Drama Network, where we listen and imagine together.